Hey people, how are we doing? Um, this is Luis. Um, I'm coming from Studio 2B. <laughs> this is actually Angel's room. Um, we got it, Angel's doing stuff in the other room, so it's Meche, so I'm, I'm going to sneak here for a little bit. Um, this, this video is what normally would have been the preview for the February, well, sorry, March 9th. For last week's March 9th uh, council meeting, um, today is uh, March 15th. I wanted to uh, do it yesterday, but um, couldn't do it. And I couldn't do a preview because I actually did not receive the council agenda. As I've told you before, you should be able to get on a list to receive the council agenda. Um, and there has been some change at the clerk's office after Bazano left like it was coming from one source then it came from another and then it went back to the other source so I think there might have been some goof up there um, after the fact it's easy to find because <clears throat> because uh, eventually they put it up on the website so right now the city council website does have full agendas for the lap for this year's for this year's um uh, from January 9th uh, to the present, um, or Janu January 13th, the first official meeting to the present, March 9th. Uh, so we'll go from there. And before anything, you hear me sniffling and stuff, um, I do have flu light symptoms, but I'm good. Este, but the big thing is the coronavirus stuff that's happening um, everywhere, and... Just, uh, I guess, two quick things. The same as, um, so in Hartford, schools have been closed through March 31st, which is um, a Tuesday, and then they will reassess. What that means is that one important thing is um, the school lunches. And, um, and so there is a plan to distribute lunches at six at six separate sites or eight separate sites throughout the um city that is uh if you look at josh mixham's facebook page there's a link there if you look on the facebook hartford like after the clouds um facebook group you'll also see something there at the uh, what i what i did is um try to provide I created a Google map so that people can see it's actually eight sites and they are the Popart Rec Center, the Sina Boys and Girls Club, um, which is on which is on Broad Street, yeah, over by the Learning Cor Corridor. Um, two boys and girls clubs, one over on Signory Street <clears throat> and one over on Chandler Street. That's in the South End. The Metzner Early Learning Center, or Metzner, uh, which is over by, um, which you call it, uh, what's that part all the way down to the s south off of Weathersfield Avenue, Franklin Avenue. Um, the North End Senior Center, which is on Coventry, Parker Memorial um, Center up on Main Street, and the Wilson Gray YMCA Youth, um, the YMCA over on Albany Avenue is called Wilson Gray YMCA. Note that lunch at this space will be from 11.45 to 12.30. I'm sure the doors will open a little bit earlier. And, um, and that is their provision for now. Libraries have been closed similarly through January 31st um, for the public, um, which obviously is another concern because a lot of... Uh, um, a lot of people use libraries, but also there's a lot of ancillary use by houseless folk. Um, and I know that there are preliminary conversations to see how to provide like satellite library services at these four, at these eight spaces. So stay tuned um, this week for that. Um, but yeah, on to the agenda, which was <clears throat> pretty, pretty, um, I mean, there are a lot of items, but most of the items were from before so not many new items so again the agenda is broken up communications uh, mostly coming from 
from the mayor. Communication might be um, coupled with a resolution or an ordinance or just um, just uh, like last 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 agenda we found there were some reports that were brought in from annual reports from different groups or different um, government entities so that was in there. Um, the second part is reports and the reports are mostly reports that are coming out of committee. So this is an, this is an item, resolution ordinance that was brought forwarded to committee and then moved like it was acted upon, they had the committee meeting and provided that a resolution was come to at that meeting it then moves forward and so this is the report that goes with said resolution. Resolution could have come from the mayor, could have come from one other council person, so on and so forth. And then <clears throat> five items for action. Again, these are might be accompanied by the report. The report speaks to the resolution and then the agenda is telling you there are X amount of items that will be acted upon because of this report. There's one proposed ordinance, so this is new, and there are three new resolutions. And I'll work backwards from there because a lot of the stuff we've actually seen um, from past, again, we have of the 24 items, let's see, five, nine, two, three, four, five, six, 11, 11, 11 are items we've seen before, um, 8 are items that are being presented by the mayor, and um, and then 3 resolutions from council. So 11 new items in a, in a whatchamacallit, a, in a council agenda of 24 items. Working backwards, um, the last 3 items are, are um, one is an appointment to the Metropolitan District Commission and we've talked about this before the Metropolitan District Commission is the um, the water company and and which we'll call it um the water company MDC is a regional body that has X amount of members um, and those members come from the districts that make up this region. So Weathersfield might have a couple representatives, uh, Bloomfield, Windsor, so on and so forth. Um, Hartford has, I think, four um, MDC commissioners appointed to it. And I and I, I should check, but I, I'm pretty sure it's like broken up as like who gets to a point. Sometimes it'll say the mayor appoints one, council appoints one. In this case, the council um, president Molly Rosado is submitting a resolution, and let's go to the end. It's actually um, item number 23, uh, 22, putting in Calixto Torres as the next commissioner from D.C. And this is what I'll call, like, <clears throat> the lazy agenda, right? Um, the lazy agenda item, because it's it's literally, like, Introduced by Council President Mari Rosado, March 9, 2020, resolved that the Court of Common Council will appoint Calista Torres, Calixto Torres, Democrat, 6 Harwood Street, Hartford, to the Metropolitan District Commission to a term ending December 31st, 2022. Um, there's no whereas, is it just goes straight to a resolved. Um, este, but yeah. So this is, and for those who do not know, Calixto Torres was a former council person, also was council president at one time, has been very engaged with the Democrat, local Democratic Town Committee. So um, this is pretty status quo um, when it comes to appointments. Um, and I think this will probably, given the makeup of the council, just pass. Um, Item number 23 is a resolution requesting that the Court of Common Council select a candidate for the position of town and city clerk that possesses the most experience and training. This is, um, this is the, this was maybe the big item of this past, this past, um, agenda. <clears throat> has been with us for a little bit. As you all know, town and city clerk John Bazzano was uh had left at the end of 
at the end of, well, at the beginning of January, and the resolution wasn't entered until late mid-February to replace him. At the time, there was one resolution naming one person, that person was Noel McGregor, um, uh, as the next town and city clerk. And we have, we talked about in at least two videos. Um, what happened after that was, then another resolution was introduced to have like a fairer process, um, and and then they moved the, the resolution for Noel McGregor forward to to whatchamacallit, to a committee, which was seen at committee. The other one is that they had a meeting um, where basically they asked people to send resumes and that you would be interviewed at this committee of the whole meeting. Um, my understanding is that there were four people that were interviewed, um, including uh, Noel McGregor, um, Billy Scruce, uh, um, uh, Eric Lusa, who's currently acting town and city clerk, and another young man, Raul de Jesus, who was a, a former city council member, um, and and it was, um, you know, as to be expected. Not not much, you know, people asking questions. Uh, and my understanding is that Mr. McGregor um, was smart, I think, you know, and brought people from the community to go and speak for him. Uh, I also understand that Eric Lusa was very, came across as possibly the most qualified person um, to, whatchamacallit, um, that was that was interviewed as far as his knowledge of the office, and that is not a surprise. And after all was said and done, this was this past Monday, um, and I don't know the intricacies of what happened, but um, but Noel McGregor was voted on as as the next town and city clerk. My understanding is that was that's immediate, um, and uh, and yeah, we'll see we'll see what happens with that very important office. I do want to say that <clears throat> their website for a lot of what they have, I mean, the websites are, are kind of horrible anyways, and I know the city's going through a whole redo, but the actual content on the website is really good, and I hope that continues. You can get the agenda packet. Um, keep in mind, when I say that you can send, a pa send an email and get the packet, that's so you can get the packet like that Wednesday. The, the packet, the agenda packet is created the Wednesday before the meeting. So the way we've been able to get it that early is just set, they've sent it to a group that they have, the email group, which is like um, that Wednesday night or the Thursday morning. So that's the earliest we were able as a, as a public um, to get that. Um, I don't beat them up so much about not putting that up online because I don't know yet like that fast because I don't know what the protocol is internally that they can add it. I don't know if they have to give it to someone and then that person puts it up. Um, and I think this new website, Redo, will help that. Ideally, as soon as the the document, the packet is created, it should live somewhere online, at least by that evening, at least by Thursday morning, so that people can have it to to see the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the Monday meeting, as opposed to making it available only to a select few people at one time. So hopefully something like that changes. Um, but it also has <clears throat> it also has um, council agendas for past dates. They have the certified council resolutions, which are all the resolutions that actually passed on a given. It only gives you the resolutions that had passed, so you can look when a resolution was seen and then when it was passed. Um, but yeah, Noel McGregor is our new town is Hartford's new town and city clerk. Congratulations to him, and I hope. Um, the level of professionalism established by the past two uh, town and city clerks continue, and the level of neutrality and and civil ship did I did I say that right? Um, extended to members of any party continues. Um, the last one is a really cool one. Um, it's naming a way. This is item number twenty four, put forth by T Councilman T J Clark. Council Majority Leader T.J. Clark, Councilwoman Marilyn Rossetti, and Councilwoman Shirley Surgeon, and that is naming a strip of um, Brook Street as as um, 
what, what is it? Perline Green Way. Um, Perline Green, like people called her mama, um, was on Brook Street for a long time. Uh, lived, uh, she came up from down south, but uh, passed uh, about four years ago, I want to say, 2014, six years ago. And, um, and so they want to, in the same way that I think uh, Granby Street, is there's a way like it still remains the street but there's a way that you can call it a way right like so from here to here is vine street but then it's also known as luis Cotto way what um so in this one they want to extend the strip from albany avenue and brook up to uh i had it Guilford Street, up to Guilford Street, which is like the last street before Brook Street ends over by the cemetery. Um, and that would be a really great way to honor a woman who was just a really awesome, dedicated um, civil servant. That is the last item on that agenda. The next items are all kind of commonplace. Um, what the mayor is introducing... Um, accepting a grant for 10000 We've seen a lot of these where we all know now that <clears throat> the council is the only entity in the city that can accept the money, officially accept the money from from anyone or any donations. Last time there was, last item, last agenda, there was, an, there was a bus stop being donated by the Connecticut Transit Authority. So in this case, um, there's a grant uh, put forth being given by the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving to the Office of Community Engagement, and that is for $10,000. And hopefully this isn't what I call a lazy grant, because then we can see what that's for. <coughs> um, to accept the grant of 10000 for the Office of Community Engagement, these funds will allow the city to acquire an anti-litter cleanup trailer filled with the necessary tools to complete neighborhood cleanup projects. The funds will also support the initial purchase of rakes, blowers, garbage bags, gloves, etc. that can be loaned to members of our community who come together to clean up their neighborhoods. Accepting this grant will have no revenue or expense impact on the city's general fund. This is pretty awesome. This is, um, again, just money that's going to go in this case to buy, to buy a trailer that will hold all this stuff so that when a lot of people have been part of those, have done a cleanup, they can ask the city for some... Uh, what you will call it? Uh, <laughs> that's on here. Um, it there's some um, supplies. Ta -ta -ta. <coughs> Excuse me for one second. He's appointing the mayor's appointing a number of members to different entities. Mayor's appointing. Mr. David Jimenez to the Hartford Board of Education. This is also another big appointment, and um, that one also does have, I think, the education committee for the city will bring David in, ask questions. Any Anybody who's a member, not a member of the committee, can still go and ask questions. Um, people normally will call the candidate off offline to ask questions also if the candidate makes him or herself available. And then there will be a vote. Um, there's uh, another 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 um, item to accept grants from the Department of Transportation and Highway Safety for fifty eight thousand um, dollars. Another uh, appointing two members to the Advisory Commission on Food Policy for the City of Hartford. Um, appointing two members to the Commission on Veteran Affairs for the City of Hartford. Appointing three members to the Commission on Cultural Affairs for the City of Hartford. Um, there's a uh, communication. There's a resolution that will authorize the execution of an extended license agreement between the City of Hartford and the Hartford Athletics. Um, <coughs> the Hartford Athletics is um, the entity that the soccer entity that is using. Um, Dillon Stadium. So there's an agreement um, on revenue sharing for the parking lot next door to use the to use the stadium, the parking. And then there are five reports that are coming from out of committee. I looked at all five reports. 
they were all voted unanimous, unanimously in the positive. On one of them, on, on all of them, there was one member absent. Um, but on one, the, a majority of these are coming from Operations Management, Budget, and a Government, Government Accountability Committee. There's five people. One person was absent that one meeting. So you'll see like that, like absent, 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 absent for that council person. And they are one, two, three... Three of them we've seen we've seen all of these, but the three are three are those that um dealt with raising the ordinance raising an ordinance and the appropriation given to a school um for said school project. In this case there was um roofing at Buckley High, um there was <coughs> there was um Improvements at Burns Latino Studies Academy, uh, and another one um, for roofing. Another at Buck, but there's public improvements at Buckley High and roofing at Buckley High, which I think is 388 Wethersfield Avenue. So those three all went to committee, and those were kind of standard because the reason they wanted to change is because the city's the the state's level of reimbursement rose. So they were able to receive more monies from reimbursement. So they brought up to that point where they could receive. Um, one is a uh, tax relief for the elderly that also passed, and that basically was moving with now. I believe it was either federal or state law moved up the age that um, or down the age that that uh, seniors can access relief. Um, especially now, that's a pretty big thing. Um, and a third thing on coronavirus. Um, Elderly senior centers are closed again um, until further notice, and that's a big thing because it's it's they are the most at risk. The high, the higher age you are, fifty plus, is when you're more at risk than younger folk. Um, there, <clears throat> the fifth report is from Public Works, Parks, Recreation, Environment Committee. I have to say that. Councilwoman Marilyn Rossetti has been awesome about making her reports available to people. So if you can find out her email, email her and her executive assistant, Charlene Craig, um, Charmaine Craig, um, will will send them to you. Um, and in this case, there was <clears throat> resolution for the Batterson Park Conservancy to to use the name Batterson, Batterson Park Conservancy in fundraising. They just became a 501c3. Their packet includes letters of reference from the surrounding communities like uh, New Britain, um, Farmington, send a letter saying, please let's do this because they want to, they want to use the name Batterson Park Conservancy when they do fundraising. Apparently they can't do it without heart for saying it's a go. So this was also passed. Um, that, that also came forward. Um, there are two for the Energy Improvement District. <clears throat> there is one that was brought in first that basically gave this entity, which is a relatively new entity, the Energy Improvement District, the power to basically approve things and, and contract with people regarding in this case i think it was uh, regarding um mount trashmore right like the the um the what you call it the landfill and post capture more post post closing activities like there have been some solar panels there now but they're looking to do more and so this this ordinance this resolution allows for that entity to make the decisions on behalf of the city one thing that we brought up is that the entity was kind of like didn't exist by their own bylaws they didn't have enough board members so when this was introduced they weren't even at the level of board members that they needed so immediately after that um they must have realized this somehow um because now the other item is appointing two members carice reynolds and richard shaw to the board of ed directors for the energy improvement district so i'm glad someone's paying attention right um, for action is those same things we talked about, the, the changing of ordinances, the municipal code for Burns Latino Academy, Buckley High, 388 we Weathersfield. Um, the ordinance making it unlawful for any person to sell 
or offer for sale any flavored tobacco products. Um, that one is one I still have to do more research on because I don't think we can do that. A municipality in Connecticut can do that. But um, Councilman Gale and another councilor, item 20, um, moved that forward and it's come out of committee. And it's a brand new, it's a brand new ordinance. It's not amending anything before. It's adding, um, well, that's uh, Exhibit A, that's... It's adding an item to the municipal code, and yeah, it's pretty simple. It's two pages. I'm just, I just would like to see the minutes on that coming out. Were there any discussion on that? Because otherwise, people go, oh, that makes sense, and then, <clears throat> then it passes, right? So, um, and the big thing that made, like. You know, anything that makes the news, Hartford Current is only going to do, like, the big controversial things, right? So, the big thing coming out of this, and this is the last item we'll talk about, <clears throat> is um, Mayor Bronin is looking to amend Chapter 2, um, which is of the ordinance, which is Appointments of Department Heads Requirements, um, Section 850 Residence Requirements of the Municipal Code. He basically wants to, <clears throat> right now... The state of Connecticut does not allow you to 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 adhere have to require residency to anyone subject to collective bargaining. So that means anyone who's in a union, you can't tell them where they live. So what the city of Hartford does, and many other spaces do it, is that they require their department heads and deputy heads, basically anyone who's not union member, like from upper management, upper upper management up you need to you need to live in the city so the mayor is looking to alleviate that except for like police chief fire police so there are four positions like chief executive officer that he does not want th that will still remain under that but for others he wants to have this relief um and uh there have been some really good uh opinions written on that both from uh, harford current had one from former city Council person uh, Corey Brinson, um, and then there's a lot of stuff being put out about that, and <clears throat> and I recommend that anyone reads it. Like again, in the packet now, it does have his letter to the council president, which describes his attempt, um, and then it has the language where it does it. The one thing that is a caveat is that <clears throat> is that anyone who's subject to this, so normally when you see a uh, when you see like a posting, you'll see like the range from $5 to $10, right? So what he's saying that anybody who doesn't live in the city of Hartford would get a 10% reduction of the, of the, of the, of the high end. So if it's five to $10 or, or let's say 60 to 70,000, whatever, the 70,000 will go down by 10%. So it's like 60 to, what's that? 60 